Lesson 76 is on finding roots of quadratic equations, and this is our first lesson in the last quarter of Shorman Mathematics Algebra 1. So as you begin this last quarter, let's just think about finishing strong, finishing this course out strong, and doing these last 25 lessons to the best of your ability, and just be thinking about your attitude. Do you have a God-glorifying attitude? Does the way you do your work reveal an attitude of thankfulness, of gratefulness that you have this opportunity to learn and a desire to learn more about God and his creation by learning mathematics, which is the language of science. It's a tool for studying his creation. You know, you could have the best math program in the world, but it really doesn't matter if you don't have a good attitude, if you're complaining, whining the whole time. You have no joy in doing your schoolwork. That's To me, that's just no fun at all. Try to make it fun. Enjoy it. Do it to the best of your ability. Have a good attitude as you go along and you finish these last 25 lessons. So let's go ahead and talk about this lesson 76, finding roots of quadratic equations. And this builds off of lesson 75 where you learn to identify and factor quadratic equations. And you know that the standard form is this ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. That's the standard form. But why are they always set equal to zero? Why isn't it like one or something like that? In other words, why don't quadratic equations have either of these forms here? Why isn't it y equals ax squared plus bx plus c? Or like a function, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c? Well, you, you can think of them that way. It's just that the standard form is when y or f of x equals zero. That's all it is because you know that these are parabolas, right? You can graph these on an xy axis and it'll have a parabolic shape to it. So the reason we set them equal to zero like that is because quadratic equations they have many real world applications, especially related to motion, acceleration in particular. That's a type of motion. And the values of x, when y or f of x equals zero, those are especially important. And so that's one of the reasons we have the standard form like this set equal to zero. In addition, it's just easier to learn how to solve quadratic relationships when y and f of x equals zero instead of equal to one or 10.2 or something else. So you had a new rule, the zero factor theorem. You had a new definition, the root of a polynomial. It's the same thing as the word zero. So we're going to be using zero and root interchangeably for a while here. All we're going to be doing in this lesson is applying the rules and definitions from Lesson 76 to find the roots of quadratic equations that were from Example 75.2. So let's take a look at Example 76.1. Find the roots or zeros. Remember, we're using those two words to mean the same thing right now. Find those for the following quadratic equations. D is not really a quadratic equation, although it has a quadratic relationship that can be factored out. So just keep that in mind as we go along here. So let's just take a look at A. And all we're going to do is factor these like we did in Lesson 75 and then use the zero factor theorem to help us find the roots. So we'll just start with x plus 3 times x plus 2 on the left. That's what that factors into is those two binomials equals zero. And of course we could have said x plus two times x plus three. The order of those binomials does not matter. Now just think of the terms inside each set of parentheses as one bag of rocks. So in other words think of the x plus three part as bag A and then the x plus two part as bag B. And according to our zero factor theorem if A and B are real numbers such as A times B equals zero, then either a is zero, in other words, x plus three is zero, b is zero, so x plus two is zero, or both of them are zero. So we're assuming here that both of them, what happens if both of them are zero? So all we do then is just say, well, what if x plus three is equal to zero? And look, we have an equation we can solve for. Add negatives 3 to both sides, and we get x equals negative 3. We can also say x plus 2. That's our b part there. x plus 2 equals 0. And just rearrange there, x equals negative 2. So we end up with two solutions there. x 
equals negative 3 and negative 2. So do you see why we call these zeros? That's one word we use to describe these. That's because we set those binomials equal to zero. What makes that binomial term equal zero? All you do on these is factor the trinomial into two binomials, set those binomials equal to zero. Or another way to think about it too is just take the opposite of the constant. So if the constant is three, then x is negative three. That'd make that whole binomial equal zero, right? because minus three plus three equals zero. And then the two here, the positive two, that x would have to be a negative two to make that binomial zero. So you just look at that opposite term. That's another way to think about them. Instead of setting up an equation and going through all that, you can actually just do that in your head. You look at the constant term, take the opposite of it. That's what your x values are going to be. Let's just go ahead and move on to b and solve that one. And so we'll factor that x squared plus 2x minus 3, factor that into two binomials first, and that would be x plus 3 times x minus 1 is equal to 0. And so this time, let's just think about it mentally. Well, if we have x plus 3, then minus 3, the opposite of positive 3, minus 3 must be one of the roots. And then the x minus 1, we'd have to have a plus 1 in there to make that binomial 0. And so that's our other answer is positive 1. So there's our two choices there for answers, our two zeros or roots. Let's move on to C. We have x squared plus 10x equals minus 25. But first, we want to get that in standard form. That's always what we want to do. If a quadratic equation is not in standard form here when we're trying to find the roots, get it in standard form first. So we move that negative 25 over and get a positive 25 is equal to 0. Then we think of two binomials there. Maybe you remember doing these from lesson 75. But this would just be x plus 5 times x plus 5 is equal to 0. And you could say x plus 5, that whole quantity squared, equals 0. You could write it like that as well. And there's only going to be one solution on this. It's going to be negative 5. x equals negative 5. Because either binomial, the number you substitute in to make that binomial 0, it's the same one. It's negative 5 for both of them. Minus 5 plus 5 is 0. D Let's look at that one. Now here we have an x cubed minus 6x squared plus 8x equals 0. But just like lesson 75, these are designed to factor out. And there, there should be a quadratic relationship you can factor into two binomials. And there is. And so we factor the x out. Or there is one x we can factor out. So we have x parentheses x squared minus 6x plus 8 and that's equal to 0. And then we have x times x minus 4 times x plus 2 is equal to 0. And actually, that should be a minus 2 there, right? So minus 4 times minus 2 is a positive 8. Minus 4x minus 2x is a negative 6x. So now we actually have three roots for this problem. Because think about this one right here. Think about the zero factor theorem. If that's zero, it's going to multiply everything else out. It'll all equal zero, right? Zero times anything equals zero. So x equals zero is one of the roots. And then the other two, just look at the binomials. Positive 4, positive 2. So we have three roots for that equation 0, 4, and 2. And we can see there too that it doesn't have to be a quadratic equation in standard form in order to factor it out and find some zeros or roots from it. If we have an x in common with all the terms, we can factor that out first. Then we see the quadratic relationship, factor that into two binomials, and then find our roots. Okay, well that's all for lesson 76.